Hello, TAP Church. It's so good to see everybody and a special good morning to all of our students and parents that are doing a great job navigating this school year. We know that the past few weeks have been an adjustment in every area of your life. So we wanted to let you know that we are praying with you. We love you and we are walking this season with you. This morning, we have a phenomenal guest speaker, Pastor Frank Solis, bringing the word. So be sure to tune in for that. And Tab Kids, congratulations. You did it. You had a great BGMC Epic Give Day last week. So today's service, we're going to be doing a little recap so you can see what BGMC is all about. And don't forget that you can still give to BGMC through our app, our church website. Be sure to continue to give to missions. For the rest of you, we want to invite you this morning to be a part of today's service. What we mean by that is we want you to be active in the live chat and in the comments with us. We want to be having a good time as a church. So we want to invite you to do the amends. Hallelujah. Let us know how how you guys are doing, how we can pray with you, where you're tuning in from, and also those emojis. We love them because it lets us know you're having a good time just like we're having a good time. So without further ado, put your hands together, sing out loud, get excited, and let's get into a time of worship. Good morning, Tab Church. Thank you so much for this opportunity to worship with you from our home from San Antonio, Texas to you guys. So we're just so excited. I'm here with my husband, Giovanni, this morning. And so we're just so grateful to lead you in the presence of God. So wherever that you're watching this, get refreshed, get connected. Let's worship the King of Kings. Amen. But you call me a 
citizen of heaven when I was broken you were my healing now your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future my eyes are open cause when you call my name Father, Lord, we thank you, Father, that we're no longer dead, but we're alive in you, Jesus. This is our testimony, church, that once we were dead, but now we're alive in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's declare this. This is our message. This is our song. Let Christ be shined and revealed through us. Amen. And I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Come on, amen. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. that I just can't get over my name is registered in heaven yes our praise belongs to him forever this is my testimony from dead to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh, this is our testimony. Come on, come together. Come together, sons and daughters. Bought with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what he started. Yes, our God will finish what he started. This is our testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, we're going to declare. If you're breathing today, this morning, he's not finished with us. Greater things are yet to come. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. testimony from dead to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify 
by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is our testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is our testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Oh, we're alive in you, Jesus. Thank you. by selling candies and, and collecting the change. See yeah, my mood. Now you move. You get the money. So, um, where do you put your money, Shay? In your body barrel. Body barrel! Oh. And if you don't have a body barrel, you can use a small box or like a clean sock or um, like a coin purse or something and then you just turn it into your church administrator or um, whoever's your teacher and they said to turn it into why do you think it's important to send fundraisers because then you get, um, people get help around the world and I think BGMC is important so we can help the missionaries spread the word of God around the world. All the money go to kids! Money. All the kids! Yeah, so you'll be sending money to um, Bibles for people that don't have any, or it can help build schools or churches or anything that they need. So make sure you send your money. You send your money on it! So, me and Trey both really love BGMC. Trey, why do you love BGMC? Because it's fun. Yeah, I think it's fun. Because sometimes at our church, they have, like, fun games and stuff. Um, and they have, like, different stations. And you're learning about God. And you can send in your um, little buddy barrels and they'll empty the money so that it can go to like Africa or different places that they don't have it. Mostly Africa is what I see. Why do you love BGMC chair? Because it gives a warm feeling in my heart. Yep, same for me. I love donating because it makes me feel like I help somebody. Get money! All the kids do you get get money? <laughs> so that's all. Bye!
of you have asked us how you can continue to give your tithes, offerings, and donations online. Just go to ltaphouston.com. Once you're on the page, scroll all the way down to where it says Donate and click on that button. The website will redirect you to PayPal online. Again, just confirm the correct amount you wish to give, and when you're ready, click Next. On the next page, you can confirm your credit card information. See where it says Add a Note? Here, you can designate your giving by entering whether your giving is offerings, tithes, missions, or a specific department offering. Don't forget to finalize your giving by clicking on Donate Now at the bottom. And that's it. Once you see the green check mark, you know we received your donation. Thank you guys for giving. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph Oh my God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord there's power in the mighty name of Jesus Every war he wages he will win And I'm not backing down from any giant Cause I know how this story is Come on, have me believe that? Yes, I know how this story is Cause I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs Jesus, everything's in your hands, Lord. Oh, we believe in Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's declare this bridge. You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. Yes, you turn it for good. What the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good Yes, you turn it for good You take You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good Yes, you turn it for good We believe it, Lord You take what the enemy meant for evil turn it for good yes you turn it for good I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord come on raise up your voice I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs
yes, you turn it for good. We thank you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Yes, you turn it for good. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, in Psalms 91, it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadows of the Almighty. Lord, we take our refuge in you that all battles are in your hands. We have the victory in you, Jesus. Lord, we do not stand in defeat, Lord. We stand in your victory, covered by your blood, Lord. We speak life this morning. We align our thoughts and our mind to you, Jesus. How oh, we thank you, Lord. By his stripes, we are healed. By his nails, pierced hands, we're free. By his blood, we're washed clean. Now we have the victory. The power of sin is broken. Jesus overcame it all. He has won our freedom. Jesus has won it all. Come on, lift up your hands right there where you're at. Say hallelujah. And hallelujah. You have won the victory. And stripes we are healed by his nails pierced hands we're free and by his blood we're washed clean and now we have the overcame it all come on he has won our victory he has won our freedom he has overcame it all come on we sing hallelujah yes Lord and hallelujah
Jesus, you have won the victory. We say in hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Come on, lift up your hands. And death could not hold you down. And you are the risen King, King of kings, seated in majesty. You are the risen God bless you, Tap Church. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday morning. Thank you for connecting and being part of our online service, our online experience. Thank you for connecting with us here every Sunday morning. We're glad that you're joining us on this Sunday. Well, before we go into the message, I want to introduce our speaker uh, with us today. We have Pastor Frank Solis. Uh, this week, we've been out visiting family and in, uh, also being in meetings uh, all this week. So uh, I've asked one of our friends, and he's a son of this house, a friend of this house, and he's been with us before, and he's ministered to us before, so I've asked him today to share God's word. So with us today, Pastor Frank Solis. Good morning. Thank you for joining TAB Online Services once again. I want to thank Pastor Jay and Melissa for the opportunity to be able to share with, with you the word of God. My name is Frank Solis, and it is my honor and privilege to be able to share with the people of my hometown church, El Tab. And all of you uh, listening across the nation and across the world, it is our prayer and our desire that we be a blessing to you today. I want to speak uh, something that God has placed in my heart uh, several weeks ago. And uh, before we begin, I'd like to say a quick prayer. Please join me. Father, we thank you this morning for the opportunity to come to your throne of grace and mercy. With thankful hearts, Lord, we approach your throne. Lord, we thank you because it doesn't matter whether we're in four walls in a facility or in a building, or we're in the four walls of our own home. Lord, you are with us. Your word says that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we're just so grateful this morning that we get to do church, Lord. We get to continue to seek your face. Your word says that when we draw near to you, you draw near to us. And that is our desire, God. We desire to be closer to you. And more importantly, we desire that you be closer to us. And Lord, we know that even though we may not feel you, even though we may not see what you are doing, we know that you are working on our behalf. We know that you are doing great things, God. And so, Lord, this morning we pray that you will speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, and that you will use the transforming power of your word and your Holy Spirit to renew us, to strengthen us, and to move us forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, we want to thank you for being with us this morning. I want to share with you a message that is, uh, goes by the title, uh, Hydration. And it's based on 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. It says, They all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them. And the rock was Christ. And again, that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. It's a very important scripture because it gives us insight into how God manifested himself to move the people of Israel from slavery into freedom, from lack, into abundance, and how God divinely guided them during a time of great crisis. Matter of fact, we're going to be speaking about three crises that they went through in the wilderness and how God manifested his power and his love and his grace to bring them through those situations. You know, we live in unprecedented times. We are experiencing crisis after crisis, not only in the United States of America, but all over the world. And we are trusting and believing God to bring us out of these crises. And so 
in reference to, uh, to what the scripture says here, uh, I want to speak about hydration. Hydration is really in simple form uh, is to drink water, to drink enough water to live, to survive, to be healthy. And so, as you know, the earth is a very watery place. Uh, just how much water exists on the earth in and above our planet? Well, statistics are 71% uh, of the earth's surface is covered by water. 71%, that's a lot of water. And the oceans hold 96.5% of all of Earth's water. Water also exists in the air as water vapor, in the rivers and the lakes, in ice caps and glaciers. In the ground, that soil moisture and in the aquifers deep under the ground. And even you and me and our pets, our dog and our cats are made out of mostly water. According to the Journal of Biological Chemistry, uh, the brain and the heart are composed of 73% water. Our lungs are about 83% water. The skin contains about 64% water. Our muscles and our kidneys are 79% water. And even the bones, which is the hardest part of our bodies, are 31% water. So our physical bodies need water because we're composed of mostly water. And so dehydration, you've heard of that word before, it occurs when the loss of fluids like water exceeds fluid intake. So if you're not drinking enough water, but you are exerting yourself through sweat, through labor, through work, or just any type of physical activity, even sleeping, uh, it's important to drink water before you go to sleep because you, you lose water during that time. Water is essential for life. Without it, we cannot live. So it's necessary to drink water as you begin to lose it or else you'll become dehydrated. When you and I become dehydrated, the human body does not function at its best and may be at risk for life-threatening diseases. Anyone may become dehydrated, but older people and young children are more susceptible. Every summer we hear about young men who, who die because they're in practice, at football practice, or they get heat stroke at work and different things that, that we read about and hear about in the news because they did not properly hydrate. So here are some symptoms of people who are suffering with dehydration. Number one, bad breath. Number one is bad breath. Maybe you've been in a situation where your spouse, uh, where you wake up and your and your wife might say, "Hey, your bath, your breath smells bad." It's because you're probably not hydrating properly before you go to bed. So I suggest, for the sake of your marriage, drink some water before you go to bed. But you know, I equate bad breath also with bad doctrine. When the church suffers dehydration, it suffers from bad doctrine. I was speaking with a young man uh, that I that I work with uh, recently about the different beliefs and, sh and, and, and philosophies and thoughts that are in Christianity itself. And, and how there's so much confusion and, and even in the, in the church and in the kingdom of God. It should not be that way. And I think a lot of it is because we're not getting hydrated with the word of God. I'm getting ahead of myself here, but here's another symptom of dehydration is that you get headaches. You know, I've been in, in church for many, many years and I've met a lot of great people in church, but I've also met a lot of not so great people in church throughout my years. And I, I've learned that a lot of people come to church and are part of the church and they don't really contribute anything positive. They just give other people headaches. And I believe it's because they're not being properly hydrated again with the Spirit of God 
and with the Word of God. Another symptom of hydration is fatigue, being tired all the time. Your body is weary. Some of you are, are trying to get help from the doctor and trying to get prescription pills, and you should always get checked uh, and make sure you are healthy. But a lot of the, the problems that you and I have physically are because you're not drinking enough water. You're not hydrating yourself properly. It is how God created us, and it's how our body functions, and we need to do that. And I believe that as you drink water physically, you will, you'll have more energy, uh, you'll clear out more toxins out of your body, you'll feel a lot more healthier. I believe that's kind of what the Lord is telling us when he says in the book of Isaiah, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not grow, grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's drinking water from the word of God. Another thing is uh, from being hydrated is that you'll not no longer have tears. It's, it'll be hard for you to produce tears. And that is so apropos to the condition of the church today. We seem to be hardened, hardened by politics, hardened by uh, just poor decision making, part, uh, hardened by worldliness, hardened by pain and hurt and unforgiveness. And so we've lost to the ability, so many of us, to feel for others. And one of the most important scriptures in the Bible is Jesus wept. That gives us so much insight into the character of who God is. God is a caring God. God is a loving God. God is a God who feels our pain, who feels our desires, who feels our trauma, and who, who is able to help us overcome those things, and who's able to help us once again begin to feel for the sake of our own health and for the sake of the health of the body of Christ and for the, for the sake of the salvation of the lost. Another thing, another symptom of dehydration is loss of elasticity. We begin to get crusty and hard and, and, and unbendable. And I believe that's what's happened in, in many churches today. We're so stuck in what God was doing in the 1950s that we don't allow God to do a new thing, to do a new work, to gives us, give us effective methods to reach young people, to reach uh, older people even then. Because people who don't serve the Lord when they're young and they get older, uh, the statistics say that they won't serve the Lord in their olden days. But we don't believe in statistics. We believe in a miracle working God who's able to reach anyone and everyone, no matter what age, no matter what financial status or socioeconomic status they live in. So we have to be flexible and be hydrated so that we can be effective in the community of our living God. Another thing that happens is that we can be lightheaded, dizziness, and confused. You know, the Bible says very clearly that God is not the author of confusion. There's a lot of confusion in the church, in ministry, especially now in days. Should we open? Should we be closed? Uh, how do we do this online? How should we do it? You know, God is not the author of confusion, but there is confusion in this world. There is dizziness, but God wants to give us strategy. God wants to give us purpose. God wants to give us direction. And the way to do that is to become hydrated by his word. So hydrate, hydration. The uh, Webster's Dictionary says that it's a, it's a, it's a way that water molecules are chemically bound, chemically bound to another compound or element. Our body, which is flesh, composed of cells, neurons, and all of the different things that compose our body, they must be combined with water so that it can function properly. It is no difference for the body of Christ. It is no difference for our individual relationships 
with God. If we don't properly hydrate, if we don't properly drink the word, then we will experience dehydration. And so I want to go to the scriptures in the Old Testament where we read about the journey of the Israelites from Egypt to Sinai. After many years of bitter slavery, living in a region just outside of Egypt, Goshen, this is where the Israel people would raise their sheep and from there they would go and work uh, for the pharaohs and the leaders of uh, the, the Egyptian nation. They became slaves who were once free. And God raises Moses up to deliver them from that state. But during that journey, the Lord provided quail. He provided manna, bread from heaven, angel food to sustain the people of Israel in the wilderness. But during that time, the people of Israel experienced three crises. The first one was right after God takes the people of Israel from Egypt and they come to a place where they have to make a decision on what to do. Behind them was the enemy pursuing them to destroy them for the final time. To the left of them were the mountains that they could not cross or escape from the enemy that was pursuing them. To the side, to the right side, there was a desert where the enemy could have continued to pursue them, to destroy them. And before them was the Red Sea or the Sea of Reeds, and they could not cross it. So Moses prayed and God gave them directions. God gave him instructions. Moses raised his staff. The Bible says that a powerful wind came and he blew the sea open. And the people of Israel walked through dry land. They crossed the Red Sea and the enemy pursued them into the sea. But when the last individual, the last person from the tribe of Israel crossed the Red Sea, the Bible declares and says that the seas came upon the enemies and killed the enemies of Israel. And so Israel celebrated this great miracle from the living God. God had truly delivered them in a miraculous way. And there are so other uh, many miracles that God did along the way to bring about this deliverance. And so the Bible uh, teaches us that Miriam, Moses' sister, she prophesied and she created and wrote a song of celebration that is with us still to today in the Old Testament. There she talked about God, about God delivering them, and how God, how God is exalted, and how God raises and takes care of the, of the lowly and the poor, and He exalts them and raises them up. She sung a song about salvation. And so God delivered them from the enemy and delivered them from drowning in water. So three days after they experienced this miraculous deliverance, they walk to, to a place and they have run out of water. You know, it's interesting how uh, medical science teaches us that our body begins to break down and to, and to start the process of dying after three days with no water. And so it's, it's interesting that the Bible says that three days after they crossed the Red Sea, they come to a place where they have drunk all their water. They have no more water. They are experiencing a crisis of water, of dehydration. Everybody has bad breath. Everybody is dizzy. Everybody is fatigued. Everybody is dehydrated. Everybody is, you've heard of this phrase, hangry, where they're all thirsty. So everybody's upset. Everybody's uncomfortable because everyone is thirsty. And then when they get to this place where they uh, find some water, everybody's hope is lifted up. Everybody is excited. But when they get to the water and they taste the water, the water is bitter. It's not drinkable. How many of us are going through something like that? We experience a miracle, we experience a, a blessing, we experience happiness and joy, 
and then we experience lack and we're upset because things are not going our way. We find ourselves in a bitter place with bitter water. And God gave Moses instructions on how to make the water sweet. And so the people were able to drink from sweet water. So the people, after complaining that they couldn't drink water, they were upset at Moses, they were upset at God. They were in a crisis. That's what we do in a crisis. We complain to God and we complain about leadership. But that's not what people who are hydrated do. But something happens to us when we are dehydrated. The second crisis was when they went another three days and all the water they had gathered, had they've exhausted it, they've drunk it all. And once again, they're in another situation where there's a water crisis and they need something to drink or they will begin to die because our body cannot last. After three days, we will begin the process of deterioration and dying and sickness and disease because our body needs water. So the Lord in the book of Exodus chapter 17, verse 5, it says, the Lord answered, take some of the leaders with you and go ahead of the rest of the people. Also take along the walking stick you use to strike the Nile River. And when you get to the rock at Mount Sinai, I will be there with you. Strike the rock with the stick and water will pour out for people to drink. Moses did this while the leaders watched. They were wanting to stone Moses. They were wanting to also stone Jesus stoning was very popular at that time they were upset once again because they were dehydrated they were thirsty and they were angry at god and his leadership so god provided water through the rock that was the second crisis they did not have a water crisis anymore until 40 years Forty years had passed as the children of Israel walked the wilderness. The Bible tells us in the book of Numbers chapter 20 that that day Miriam passed away. Miriam, the one who saved Moses. The one who placed Moses in the water and he was rescued by, Potiphar, uh, by, by Pharaoh's daughter and then raised by Pharaoh's daughter in the kingdom of Egypt. That Miriam who was able to uh, do things prophetically and practically to save Moses so that Moses would grow up to become someone. She was a very important individual to Moses. Without, without Miriam, there is no Moses. And she was a blessing to the people of Israel. And so on Numbers 20, when Miriam passes away, the Bible says that the rock stopped producing water. And so the people of Israel do not mourn Miriam. They do not cry for Miriam. But they begin to complain once again, where's our water? Meet my needs. I need something. I'm looking out for number one. And so when they came to Moses and said, Moses, you need to do something about this lack of water. Moses was in a period where he had just lost one of the closest relationships in his life, his sister Miriam. Again, without Miriam, there is no Moses. She rescued him as a little child when Pharaoh was killing baby boys. And so he was hurting, he was in a lot of pain. The last thing he wanted to hear were other people complaining about their situation without them showing empathy and sympathy for his own loss and the own crisis that he was suffering in his life by the loss of his sister. And so when God instructed Moses to go and to not hit the rock, but speak to the rock and the rock would give water, Moses was upset. He was hurt. He was experiencing pain and loss. 
and he lost control of his of his emotions and instead of speaking to the rock he hit the rock he could not understand how people were so unsympathetic to his plight it upset him I want to tell you right now that I feel that many of you are angry you've lost a job because of COVID you've lost loved ones I've done funeral because of people that we've lost during this current crisis that we're going through. Some people say it's fake. Some people say it's real. It doesn't matter. We are all experienced some type of loss. Divorces are up by 30, over 30%. Suicides are up. Loss of jobs are up. We are experiencing right now unprecedented crisis. We are truly experiencing psychological, spiritual dehydration. And we need water from the rock. We have not had the opportunity to mourn some of our friends and loved ones. We haven't been able to be with them in hospitals because of the current situation. This is exactly how Moses felt and he was angry. And he disobeyed the Lord's command because he let his anger get the best of him. I want to tell you that we can overcome these crises of dehydration. Jesus met a woman at the well and Jesus told her that if she were to drink from the water that he offered, that she would not thirst anymore. That's available for you and for me. In John chapter 7, verse 37, the Bible says, Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke to the Spirit, of the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Awesome how Jesus is telling us here is, not only is He the rock that gives water, but He can make us rocks that give water. That rivers of living water will flow from us through the Spirit of God. So Jesus, the living water, has come to hydrate us. And when He joins His essence, when He places His Spirit within us, with our and He joins with our lost soul in order to quench our thirst and to give us life and to be the fountain where other peoples can come and hydrate. John chapter 19, verse 32, 34. It tells us exactly when Jesus poured out this water for us. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man and of the other man who had been crucified with him. But coming to Jesus, when they saw that he had already died, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately there came out blood and water. Here here we read that Jesus was that rock in the wilderness providing water. In 1 Corinthians 10, 4, we read that he followed them the rock miraculously, miraculously moved, following the people of Israel for 40 years, providing water for them to drink. And here we see where Jesus, once and for all, gave us the water to drink when he was on the cross at Calvary. You and I can drink from the true rock. On the cross, blood and water flowed from the rock the living rock, the rock of our salvation. So when Miriam's sister of Moses died and the rock stopped producing water, in the New Testament when Mary, which is another form of the name Miriam, the mother of Jesus, saw the rock give water as he died. That is God's plan. That is God's purpose, to hydrate his people, to give living water to the nations, to the world. Pray with me today. I don't know what crisis you might be going through, 
But God wants you to be full of his water, to be hydrated with his presence and his word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone listening right now. I pray that you will give them a drink from the well, a drink from the rock, a drink from Yeshua, from Jesus, our Lord, our King, our Messiah. God, there isn't a human leader that can guide us and lead us. They can certainly follow your plan. Even they need the water from the rock. So Lord, I pray that as we get close to you, that you would hydrate us today, that you would hydrate our marriage, that you would hydrate our families, that you would hydrate our sons and daughters, that you would hydrate our churches, that you would hydrate, Lord, our communities, that you will pour your water into individuals, into people who draw near to you today. Father, we thank you. And we're so grateful, Lord, for all that you've done, how you've taken care of us. Lord, you will turn our sadness into gladness. You are turn our ashes, Lord, into rejoicing. We thank you because you're a God that desires good and has great plans in store for us. That you have a future that is full of hope, that is full of faith, and that is full of love. Father, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Tad, we love you. And we pray God's best for you this day. Stay hydrated. In Jesus' name. Amen.